All right, let's take a look at the book of Philippians, chapter 1. Please get it out in your King James Bibles. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I, In my previous study, we did all the times in the Bible where the day of the Lord was mentioned. Now we're going to take a look at all the places where day of Christ is mentioned. And personally, I think it's the same event. Pre-trib rapture churches will say, nope, day of Christ is the pre-trib rapture and the day of the Lord is at the end of the tribulation when the Lord destroys the world. So are they different? Is Jesus Christ Lord? I say yes. Philippians 1.1 1, 1, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons. Philippi was a city in Greece. Verse 2 Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Huh. Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's who, the day of the Lord. Hmm. And they want to tell you the day of the Lord is different than the day of Christ. But it says here, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making request, request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hmm. that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye are, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. In judgment, but we were told, judge not lest ye be judged. Well, don't take that out of context. I did that in a previous study in this series. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. You see, our righteousness comes by Jesus Christ. It doesn't come from Torah keeping. Verse 12, But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the in all the palace, uh, palace and in all other places. Verse fourteen, and many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed. 
preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always. So now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life, or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what, what, yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you, with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition. But to you, of salvation and that of God. You see, if you're in Christ, you're going to have adversaries. You're going to have enemies. Christ had enemies. The apostles had enemies. Paul had enemies. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Boy, you start preaching about suffering for the gospel and Christ, and uh, the church is going to empty out. So. so they kind of avoid that part. Verse 30, having the same conflict which ye saw me, and now here to be in me. In Luke chapter 9.22, we read, The Son of Man must suffer suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. That's the gospel. Raised on the third day. All right, let's go to Acts chapter 9. You know, the Paul haters, they, uh, do you know that they don't believe the book of Acts? Why? Well, Acts chapter 9, verse, oh, uh, let's see, verse 10. Acts chapter 9, verse 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named 
Ananias come in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind on all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. See, Paul haters want you to throw out the book of Acts. I mean, the Lord said to Ananias, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Ooh. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Boy, if they preach that on TBN, uh, how many people would be sending them donations, huh? Yeah, if you come to Christ, you're going to suffer. No, they don't teach that. They, they're they like, oh, yeah, send God a blessing. Send him $100. God will bless you 10 times. He'll turn that $100 into a 1000 uh, and you'll get your financial a blessing of praise of Jesus. Boy, they don't talk about suffering, do they? No, absolutely not. Turn to Romans chapter 8, verses 17 and 18. Um, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory of which shall be revealed in us. Huh. And people will tell you, oh, well, you know, that's the wrath of God, and we're not appointed unto wrath, so this can't apply to us. Here's an interesting verse, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 3. In this context, the word suffer means allow. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer, or allow, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. How about Philippians 1.29? For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. In Philippians 3.8, we're going to read this. Yea, doubtless I, I, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Here's a good Bible verse. Next time somebody tells you that the Romans killed Jesus. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 12. That ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you 
that believe. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins always for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Who's the wrath coming upon? The Jews for rejecting Christ. For the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. They haven't figured it out yet, but they will. Here is some interesting stuff. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. And we're not talking about reign in the sky. We're talking about reign as in ruling. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Who's him? Christ. All right, so... If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, Christ, if we deny him, he will also deny us. Think about that if your head ever comes up on the chopping block. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly. Do you live godly? Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. When have you read that in the, uh, when have you ever heard that in the church, huh? In 1 Peter 2.21, for even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Hmm. 1 Peter 3.14 But and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Wow. First Peter 4.16, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Wow. In John 15.18, Jesus speaking, if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. All right, well, this is the uh, end of this particular Bible study. We've got two more of the day of Christ. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. That's Jesus, who is the Christ, in his precious name. Amen.